Yes. So, without wasting any more time, let's make a heading. So today we will be starting with a class of drugs. We will discuss two types of drugs in today's class. The first class we will discuss will be cholinergic drugs. And the second class of drug that we will discuss will be anticholinergic drugs. Okay, second class will be anticholinergic drugs. So this is the first slide. So this is the first slide. So cholinergic drugs and anticholinergic drugs. Okay, now we know that cholinergic drugs, they will increase parasympathetic activity in the body while anticholinergic drugs they will decrease parasympathetic activity in the body as the name implies okay so cholinergic drugs will increase parasympathetic activity while anticholinergic drugs will reduce parasympathetic activity so let's start let's start with the first one cholinergic drugs so let's make a heading everyone make a heading cholinergic drugs make a heading cholinergic drugs okay cholinergic drugs all your doubts of the previous class i will be taking don't worry about that i uh, you can post on facebook also i was replying also so let's make a heading cholinergic drugs so we are starting with the first one cholinergic drugs everyone make a heading okay so this is the first slide okay so we are starting now the students who have just joined okay so let's start with the first one cholinergic drugs cholinergic drugs will increase parasympathetic activity in the body so cholinergic drugs they are of two types either they are directly acting or they are indirectly acting or they are indirectly acting okay either they are directly acting or this is the first slide okay beta this is the first slide of the today's class okay cholinergic and anticholinergic drugs so we are starting first with cholinergic drugs okay cholinergic drugs are divided into two types directly acting and indirectly acting now what does it mean let's understand directly acting drug they will go on the receptor can you tell me two receptors of acetylcholine either n or m and they will directly act as an agonist they will directly act as an agonist agonist means that they will directly stimulate the receptor if you remember acetylcholine was released don't make this diagram this diagram you will not make there were two receptors nicotinic and muscarinic so these drugs they will directly stimulate nicotinic or muscarinic receptors now what about indirectly acting drug indirectly acting drugs are anti choline esterase i hope you remember anti choline esterase word okay now why anti choline esterase there was some enzyme linked out here this enzyme was responsible for degradation of acetylcholine so if you inhibit this enzyme if you inhibit this enzyme what will happen the level of acetylcholine increases endogenous level of acetylcholine will increase and that acetylcholine will act on the receptors and that acetylcholine will act on the receptors okay now if you talk about these drugs you don't have to make this diagram okay you don't have to make this diagram now we will be starting first with directly acting drugs now these directly acting drugs we will write are of two types you'll write esters and alkaloids 
esters and alkaloids so directly acting drugs are of two type esters and alkaloid among indirectly acting drug which we will discuss later on i hope you remember the names of those drugs from the previous class carbamates and organophosphates carbamates and organophosphate so let's start first with directly acting drugs directly acting cholinergic drugs let's start first with directly acting cholinergic drugs okay now what is the difference between esters and alkaloids remember esters drug they are synthetic we synthesize in factories or commercially prepare alkaloids are natural alkaloids are natural let's write the names of these drugs first among esters you will write a mnemonic a b c m a b c m so a for now we are discussing drugs now we are discussing acetylcholine as a drug bethanicol carbacol and lastly methacholine lastly methacholine now how to remember alkaloid is a chemical nature okay so you don't have to remember what is alkaloid alkaloid means there is chemical nature now we have written this a b c m acetylcholine carbacol bethanicol methacholine and acetylcholine now how to remember them remember all these drugs they are having call word in between they all are having call word in between so i hope you can remember except one which is an alkaloid we will write these alkaloid a very great source of alkaloid is the people who eat pan masala heard about pan masala pan masala right like this okay they are present in pan masala because in pan masala we have one chemical ericoline which is present in betel nuts okay so it is the only exception where you are finding the word call theek hai otherwise call word will not come so you'll just fill up the whole other drugs pilocarpine nicotine muscarine and lobiline lobiline okay so these are the drugs okay it's a very important question people ask what is pilocarpine it is an ester or an alkaloid people will the, the examiner will ask it's an alkaloid the call word is not coming okay the only exception you have to remember is any choline it is having call word and it is not an ester now let's start with each of the following drugs okay one by one we will discuss each of the following drug so let's start with the first one now we are discussing acetylcholine as a drug so we will discuss each one of the following one by one so first is acetylcholine you'll write acetylcholine it is the shortest acting drug it is a shortest acting drug it cannot be given orally it cannot be given by injections like intravenous injection also now can you tell me the reason why because it is rapidly degraded a very important question by which enzyme i'll give you two option one is acetylcholine esterase one is pseudocholine esterase which enzyme would you like to mark if i'll give you two option it is rapidly degraded by which enzyme you will go by this answer or this second one the answer is when you are giving acetylcholine as a drug it will first come into the blood so it is rapidly degraded by pseudocholine esterase because in our blood we have pseudocholine esterase acetylcholine esterase was attached to the end organ okay 
So that is why. Is there any use of acetylcholine? Yes, there is one use of acetylcholine. Acetylcholine can be given as an intraocular eye drops. As an intraocular eye drops during eye surgery. During eye surgery. Now, can you tell me? When you are using them during eye surgery, can we say acetylcholine, parasympathetic drug? It will produce meiosis. Remember meiosis. So why it is given to produce transient or a very short-lasting meiosis? And why we want to produce this short-lasting meiosis to check whether our iris is damaged or not damaged. If it is not damaged, it will respond and it will produce meiosis. If the iris gets damaged, it will not undergo meiosis. To check the responsiveness of iris, we give acetylcholine during eye surgery. Second drug we will write is bethanicol. Okay. Now bethanicol we will write is M three. Agonist. Remember yesterday's class, specifically M3 agonist. And if you remember, M3 receptor contract smooth muscles. It contract smooth muscles. So let's see with smooth muscles. First, bladder. You know that in our bladder. We have one muscle. Don't draw this diagram. Which muscle is present here? Which muscle is present out here? Detrusor muscles. So, if this detrusor muscle will contract, if this detrusor muscle will contract, what will happen? The bladder will pass out urine. Hence, bethanicol is given for the treatment of. Urinary retention. Okay, the it is given for the treatment of urinary retention. Okay, now my question is, what are the causes? Which type of urinary retention? Remember, if you are contracting this detrusor muscle, remember there should be no obstruction below it. Okay. If there is some obstruction below it, you will not give detru uh, bethanicol, okay? Because you are contracting detrusor, you will not give bethanicol if there is some obstruction below it. So it is given in non-obstructive, non-obstructive type of urinary retention. Let's write certain examples of non-obstructive urinary retention. Where detrusor muscles are not contracting, they are paralyzed. The first cause you can write is postpartum, postpartum urinary retention. Second, postoperative urinary retention. Okay, because in this, and you will write because in these condition, the tone of the muscle of detrusor muscle. Is lost. There is a tony, or you will write a tonic bladder. The loss. There is loss of tone of detrusor muscle. A tonic bladder. Detrusor muscle are paralyzed, so they are used here. Okay. Now, second, it will also contract intestinal muscle. It will contract intestinal muscles. Hence, it is given for the treatment of. Paralytic ileus. Paralytic ileus. There is one great example where intestinal muscles are not contracting. That condition is known as megacolon. In megacolon, the intestinal muscles are not contracting. Slowly and slowly, intestine will become dilated. It is known as megacolon. Okay, so it is given out here. So this is bethanicol, an important drug for you. Okay, bethanicol. Next drug you will write is carbacol.
कार्बाकॉल इज गिवन एज अ टॉपिकल आई ड्रॉप्स टू प्रोड्यूस मियोसिस टू प्रोड्यूस मियोसिस रिमेंबर वी प्रोड्यूस मियोसिस इन द ट्रीटमेंट ऑफ ग्लोकोमा एंड ग्लोकोमा इज अ सेपरेट टॉपिक आई विल टेल यू लेटर ऑन सो प्लीज leave this point for a moment why we produce meiosis in glaucoma we will discuss that later on okay why we you we need to produce meiosis in glaucoma we will discuss later on and the last drug you will write is methacholine and mark this drug this is an important drug so this is an important drug question comes on this drug very important methacholine okay यू आर बेटा स्टैंड फॉर यूरिनरी रिटेंशन नाउ मिथाकोलिन इज एम टू एंड अदर एम स्पेसिफिक ड्रग सो इट हैज मैक्सिम एफिनिटी फॉर विच रिसेप्टर इट हैज मैक्सिम एफिनिटी इट विल स्टिमुलेट मेनली विच रिसेप्टर एम टू ओके लेस ऑफ M1, M3, etc. So, if a question comes, which of the following drug is M2 specific agonist, muscarinic 2? You will go by the answer methacholine. Now, what is the use of methacholine? Now, methacholine, we will write it has one use that methacholine can be given inhalationally. Inhalational methacholine. is given in a test that test is known as methacholine challenge test okay now it is given in a test known as yes m4 also all other m okay m4 is just like m2 beta okay so now methacholine challenge test now what is methacholine challenge test when you give your your patient inhalational methacholine can we say it will go to the bronchus okay it will go to the bronchus and if the bronchus is hyper reactive if the bronchus is hyper reactive due to muscarinic receptor stimulation it will lead to bronchoconstriction it will lead to bronchoconstriction so can we say it will provoke asthma can we say it will provoke asthma hence it is a provocative test to diagnose asthma and one similar disease known as copd okay it's a provocative test to diagnose if the bronchus is hyper reactive remember in asthma the bronchus becomes hyper reactive okay in asthma and copd copd is chronic obstructive pulmonary disease okay so i'll explain you acetylcholine later on don't worry okay so so what is methacholine challenge test when a person will inhale methacholine this methacholine will go to the bronchus and if the bronchus is hyper reactive it will lead to bronchoconstriction we know that acetylcholine like drugs are they produce bronchoconstriction okay bronchoconstriction okay remember this part it has m3 action also beta it has m3 action also now let's talk about further let's talk about further is there any other agent apart from methacholine which can be given yes it there are other agents also which can be given for this provocative test the other agents are histamine it is known as histamine challenge test and the third agent which can be given inhalationally to provoke asthma is mannitol okay so apart from methacholine what other agents can be given to provoke asthma to diagnose a patient of asthma histamine can also be used 
Manitol can also be used. Okay. Okay. Manitol can also be used. See, it has M3 action also, beta. It has M3 action also. In a normal person, bronchus, they have very less amount of M3 receptor. But in asthma, what happens? The M3 receptors increases. The number of M3 receptor increases drastically. Okay, the bronchus is hyperreactive. So in those cases, methacholine can provoke bronchoconstriction. Okay, now let's move ahead. Before going further, we will write that how these drugs are degraded. We have written esters. These esters like drug, they are degraded by esterase enzyme. We will write that acetylcholine. It is degraded when as a given as a drug, it is degraded by pseudocholine esterase and acetylcholine esterase. But if a question is will come, you will go by which answer? If one question will come, you will go by the answer pseudocholine esterase. Okay, you will go by this answer. Second point, you will write methacholine is degraded by acetylcholine esterase and it is resistant to pseudocholine esterase. It is resistant to both histamine and mannitol beta are also given inhalationally just like methacholine. Okay. And the lastly, bethanicol and carbacol. They are resistant to both pseudocholine esterase and acetylcholine esterase. So, bethanicol and carbacol, they are resistant to both. Okay. Bethanicol and carbacol, they are resistant to both. Now, can you tell me that which of the following drug will be, will be shortest acting? Acetylcholine is the shortest acting drug. And these drugs are longest acting. These drugs are longest acting. So acetylcholine like drugs, they are shortest acting and bethanicol and carbacol, they are longest acting drug. Okay. The question will get, you will get bethanicol, which of the following is longest acting. You will get the option of bethanicol. Okay. So this is about, this is about your esters. Let's come to now, which other drugs, which are found in nature. Which drug was found in nature? Alkaloids. So let's make a heading alkaloids. So alkaloids, they are natural. Okay. Alkaloids, they are natural. And among them, we have to discuss only three drugs. The first drug we will write is pilocarpine. The first drug and please mark it's a very important drug for you. Pilocarpine is a very important drug for you. Please mark. You will get question very often on pilocarpine. Okay. Okay. Pilocarpine. Okay. Pilocarpine. Now, pilocarpine, it is obtained from leaves of Pilocarpus plant. It is obtained from the leaves of Pilocarpus plant. Okay. Okay. Bethanicol and Carbacol, they are resistant. They are simply excreted out in urine. Okay. Now, they are obtained from leaves of Pilocarpus plant. Now, what is the effect of Pilocarpine? Pilocarpine in low dose stimulate muscarinic receptor while in high dose it also stimulates nicotinic receptor while in high dose it also stimulates nicotinic receptor. Now the point is in low dose. In low dose, when you will give pilocarpine 
इट विल लीड टू ब्रेडी कार्डिया एंड हाइपोटेंशन कैन यू टेल मी वाई बाई विच रिसेप्टर आई होप यू रिमेंबर दिस पार्ट इन लो डोज पाइलोकार्पिन विल प्रोड्यूस ब्रेडी कार्डिया एंड हाइपोटेंशन वाई ब्रेडी कार्डिया बिकॉज ऑफ स्टिमुलेशन ऑफ एम टू रिसेप्टर वाई हाइपोटेंशन एम थ्री नाइट्रिक ऑक्साइड वेजो डायलिटेशन एग्री बट इन हाई डोज इट प्रोड्यूस टेकी कार्डिया इट प्रोड्यूस टेकी कार्डिया वाई इट प्रोड्यूस टेकी कार्डिया एंड हाइपर टेंशन बिकॉज ऑफ स्टिमुलेशन ऑफ सिंपथेटिक गैंगलिया because of stimulation of which receptor and n receptors which will increase sympathetic activity okay so i hope it makes sense to you now okay it makes sense to you very good let's move ahead let's see the uses of pilocarpi let's see the uses of pilocarpi the first use of pilocarpi we will write is that pilocarpine is given as a topical eye drops it is given as a topical eye drops so the first use you will write is it is given as a topical eye drops and the concentration is 0.5 to 4% 0.5 to 4% now when it is given as a topical eye drop pilocarpine is the doc doc means drug of choice pilocarpine is the drug of choice as a meiotic agent to produce meiosis the drug of choice is pilocarpine how we can remember this drug if we give topical eye drops of pilocarpine it produces meiosis it produces meiosis and it is a drug of choice to produce meiosis okay okay it is the drug of choice to produce meiosis uh just a moment it's a drug of choice to produce meiosis okay how to remember this point remember pupil will constrict with pilocarpine if you want to constrict the pupil the best drug is if you want to constrict the pupil to produce meiosis the best drug you have is pilocarpine this p for pupil constriction p for pilocarpine you can remember this point okay okay now remember this point where we you, know, you need to produce meiosis now first use meiosis is we produced in cases of glaucoma okay meiosis we produce in cases of glaucoma and you will write it is the drug of choice to open iridio corneal angle it is the drug of choice to open iridio corneal angle the drug of choice is the drug of choice is pilocarpine okay iridio corneal angle and we will write next point glaucoma is a separate topic we will discuss glaucoma in great detail when the number of glaucoma when glaucoma we will discuss okay so we will limit our discussion to here glaucoma second point pilocarpine it is given to counteract the effect of midriatics to counteract the effect of midriatics remember midriatics are generally given during fundoscopy midriatics are generally given during fundoscopy when you want to dilate pupil and see the retina behind and lastly it is given 
अल्टरनेटिव विद मिड्रियाटिक सो मियोटिक विद मिड्रियाटिक देन मियोटिक देन मिड्रियाटिक वाई टू ब्रेक टू ब्रेक आयरिस एडेशन टू ब्रेक आयरिस एडेशन आयरिस एडेशन आर नोन एस सिनेकिए आयरिस एडेशन आर नोन एस सिनेकिए ओके आयरिस एडेशन आर नोन एस सिनेकिए आयरिस एडेशन आर नोन एस सिनेकिए ओके ओके सो आई जस्ट रिफ्रेश डोंट वरी आयरिस एडेशन इज नोन एस सिनेकिए so this is the first use of pilocarpine as a meiotic agent meiotic agents are given in these three conditions okay now i hope you can remember okay now next point pilocarpine also can we say it increases lacrimation it also increases sweating okay it also increases sweating third point it also increases salivation it also increases salivation okay it's also increases salivation it also increases sweating and it is the drug of choice for testing of lacrimation testing and sweat testing when you want to see the composition of tears composition of sweat we give pilocarpine now as it increases salivation pilocarpine is given for the treatment of xerostomia okay now pilocarpine is given for the treatment of xerostomia you know that xerostomia is known as dry mouth and this condition xerostomia or dry mouth is seen in cases of a syndrome known as jogren syndrome and cystic fibrosis and cystic fibrosis so it's a disease in which our mouth becomes dry there is lack of salivation to promote salivation through muscarinic receptors we give pilocarpine okay okay now for this xerostomia and jogren syndrome we have two drugs one is pilocarpine and one new drug which is just a modification of pilocarpine that another drug is sevimeline it is same like pilocarpine exactly same like pilocarpine so what are the two drugs we give to promote salivation is in zero or uh, xerostomia in xerostomia treatment pilocarpine and sevimeline okay pilocarpine and sevimeline now i want to ask you one question okay i'll ask you one question what are the side effects of pilocarpine okay and i am talking about ocular side effect i am talking about ocular side effect okay ocular side effect now first point can we say when the pupil is constricted there is meiosis because of this meiosis there will be decrease in visual acuity so there is constriction of pupil now this constriction of pupil will decrease visual acuity okay second point the person will keep on crying why the person will keep on crying why lacrimation and punctal stenosis of nld 
कैन यू टेल मी वॉट इज एन एल डी एन एल डी स्टैंड फॉर नेजोलेक्ट्राइमल डक्ट सो कैन वी सेट टीयर्स वेन दे आर प्रोड्यूस दे आर ड्रेन थ्रू नेजोलेक्ट्राइमल डक इन टू द नोस सो दे विल नॉट एबल टू ड्रेन ऑल्सो ओके सो कैन वी सेट देर विल बी आउट फ्लो ऑफ टीयर्स द टीयर्स विल फॉल डाउन दिस फॉलोइंग ऑफ टीयर्स और क्राइम is known as epiphora this disease is known as epiphora okay overflow of tears is known as epiphora great third now sir you know that this is iris in i it is iris and behind this iris this is a lens and here we have a muscle can you tell me which muscle is present out here between iris and lens there is ciliary muscles and on ciliary muscles we have muscarinic receptors i will tell you in glaucoma it leads to ciliary spasm it leads to ciliary spasm remember when any muscle undergoes into spasm the symptom which occurs is pain so due to ciliary spasm it leads to pain and stinging sensation it leads to pain and stinging sensation okay nld beta stands for nasolacrimal duct okay now i want to ask you one question let's see that question okay let's see this question This question was asked in AIMS. Okay. Now let's talk about one question. Okay. In which of the following? condition pilocarpine will not produce meiosis this was the question in which of the following condition the pilocarpine will not produce meiosis okay so option a अंकल हर्नियशन एंड दिस इज अ क्वेश्चन टू टेस्ट योर एनाटमी ऑल्सो सेकेंड एडिंगर वेस्टपाल न्यूक्लियस डैमेज थर्ड एडीस tonic pupil heard about these terms and pharmacological block of m3 by atropine this was a question which was asked okay this was the question which was asked in which of the following condition pilocarpine will not produce meiosis any guesses out here chal without coming to the answer first let's understand this whole pathway okay let's understand this whole pathway okay let's see how parasympathetic nerve supply comes to the iris suppose sir this is brain this is brain i am seeing the brain in from the front okay in our brain here we have one nucleus known as edw that is edinger westphal nucleus okay edinger westphal nucleus from this edinger westphal nucleus we have third cranial nerve can you tell me which cranial nerve is third oculomotor and we know that third cranial nerve oculomotor carry parasympathetic fibers so it is a parasympathetic nerve 3 7 9 and 10 it goes to a ganglia 
This ganglia is known as ciliary ganglia. Can you tell me which neurotransmitter is released out in ciliary ganglia? Which neurotransmitter is released in ganglia? Acetylcholine. Okay. And acetylcholine acts on which receptor in ganglia? NN. From here, short ciliary nerves arise. Short ciliary nerves. And these short ciliary nerves, they go to iris. They go to iris. Okay. And these are the muscles of iris known as sphincter pupillae. And these sphincter pupillae, they have here what is released again acetylcholine. And acetylcholine act on M3 receptors of sphincter pupillae. Acetylcholine acts on M3 receptors of sphincter pupillae. And let's see now what will happen. M3 receptor of sphincter pupillae. M3. Okay. M3 receptor of sphincter pupillae. Now what happens? Let's see the option. One is uncle herniation. Uncle herniation is the herniation of brain. Tentorial hernia. Okay. This is uncle herniation. So uncle herniation damages or compresses Edinger Westphal nucleus. Okay. Second is Edinger Westphal nucleus damage. Third is Eddystonic pupil. And fourth is atropine. Fourth is atropine. Okay. Now the question is what about pilocarpine? Pilocarpine is directly acting or indirectly acting drug. Tell me. It is directly acting muscarinic agonist. It can directly act on it can directly act on iris. It can directly act on iris. That means it can directly stimulate M3 receptors present on iris. So my question is, if there is Edinger Westphal nucleus damage, if there is Eddystonic pupil, if there is no acetylcholine released by these nerves, can we say still pilocarpine can directly act on can directly act on iris and it can directly produce meiosis. Okay. So the answer for this question is D. The answer for this question is D. Okay. I hope you have understood very simple question. Okay. So this question was asked. Let's move ahead. Next question. Next drug. Pan masala. Ericoline we will not discuss. Next is pan N for Nicotine. Nicotine. Now, nicotine, we all know it is present, it is obtained from a plant, Nicotiana tobacco. Nicotiana tobacco. Okay. Now, what is the use of what is the use of nicotine? Nicotine use it is given for smoking cessation. Or smoking de addiction. It is given for smoking de addiction. Okay. Now let's hear only. Let's discuss about, let's discuss about what are the different drugs we have for smoking cessation. Okay. So you can see this slide. Now why pilocarpine will not produce meiosis in fourth? Because pilocarpine directly acts on muscarinic receptor. Muscarinic receptors are blocked by atrophy. Okay. In all other condition, the muscarinic receptors are free. Okay. The nerves have been damaged, which are unable to release acetylcholine. So in those cases, pilocarpine will directly go on iris and produce meiosis. 
while in cases of ectropin the m3 receptors are blocked pilocarpin will not able to produce meiosis so the answer is fourth okay okay chalo let's talk about nicotine we know that nicotine is present in cigarettes and same nicotine is given for smoking cessation let's understand what is the cause of addiction of a drug first what causes addiction what causes addiction normally suppose suppose there is a person who used to smoke who smoke a cigarette okay suppose there is a person who smokes a cigarette when a person smokes a cigarette can we say when cigarette smoke uh, person smokes cigarette the nicotine which is present in our the nicotine which is present in cigarette its concentration will increase its concentration will increase do you agree with this part and in high concentration in our brain this nicotine will produce happy feeling happy feeling means a person will have pleasurable effect that is why a person loves to smoke okay can we say that this pleasurable effect has rewarding rewarding effect a person feels very happy rewarded that is why a person that is why a person loves to smoke but the question is when a person will not get nicotine when the concentration falls when the concentration of nicotine falls the person will go into withdrawal and the person will have craving for cigarette a person will have craving for cigarette do you agree with this part pleasure means a person when a person smokes person has euphoric effect loss of anxiety increased talkativeness this pleasurable effect person likes that is why a person says to relieve stress to relieve anxiety i want to smoke a person will say like this that is why person becomes addictive to a drug now the point is my question is in cases of drug d addiction in cases of drug d addiction remember we don't want that the person should have pleasurable effect and we also don't want a person should go into withdrawal because if a person will go into withdrawal or a person will have craving a person will again love to smoke because of craving a person will again love to smoke so in cases of addiction so in cases of addiction we want to break this cycle we want to break this cycle of pleasure and withdrawal okay so let's see what are the drugs we have for smoking cessation okay nicotiana tobacum is the plant name from which nicotine is obtained i know it's a plant product so let's write drugs for smoking cessation now it's a very important topic for you it's a very important topic for you okay so you will write drugs for smoking cessation they are of three types first line drugs first line drug means that you will start these drugs are started first when the person will come you will write second line drugs second line drugs are add on drugs and certain non approved drugs these drugs are not approved but still some doctors they prescribe if a drug is not approved still prescribed it is known as off label use off label use off label use means the drug is not approved but some people they still prescribe this drug okay now first line drug we will write very important for you write a mnemonic write a mnemonic for it nicotine very bad first line drug is mnemonic is nicotine very bad nicotine very bad i'll tell you the reason okay n for nicotine 
वेरिनिक क्लीन एंड ब्यूप्रोपियॉन निकोटीन वेरी बैड ओके सेकेंड लाइन ड्रग्स यू राइट क्लोनिडीन एंड नॉट रिप्टिली क्लोनिडीन एंड नॉट रिप्टिली ओके नॉन अप्रूव ड्रग आई विल टेल यू लेटर ऑन okay i'll tell you later just leave the space out here okay leave the space out here because no one will ask you off label use drug non approved drugs no one will ask you so just leave the space out here we will fill that space later on okay now let's talk about let's talk about let's talk about first drug nicotine first drug nicotine okay okay now nicotine is present in cigarette okay the person will was having pleasure the person will have was having craving hai na this cycle was there don't draw this point now why we give nicotine we give nicotine in very low dose we give nicotine in very low dose don't draw this diagram and we give this nicotine in a continuous fashion we give nicotine continuously and slowly and slowly we will taper of the dose slowly and slowly we will taper of the dose okay slowly and slowly we will taper of the dose now let's understand this part why we are giving nicotine in low dose because in low dose it will not produce pleasure and why we are giving continuously because if you will give continuously it will not lead to craving also okay so same drug which was present in cigarettes nicotine is also given for smoking cessation but in which fashion we give nicotine in low dose and continuous fashion to break this cycle of pleasure and craving do you agree with this point so can we give can we give this nicotine as a transdermal patch do you agree with this point can we give this nicotine as a transdermal patch and slowly and slowly we will reduce the concentration of nicotine in transdermal patch okay okay taper off means slowly and slowly we will reduce the dose taper means we will reduce the dose slowly and slowly okay second you will write nicotine chewing gums and lozenges lozenges means strepsil the tablet which is kept in mouth never swallowed so slowly and slowly it will chewing gums and lozenges they will slowly and slowly continuously they will release nicotine okay you don't have to chew suddenly you have to chew them very slowly and slowly lastly nasal spray okay so taki taste bana rahe my question from you is my question from you is would you like to give nicotine orally or sublingually orally and sublingually nicotine has sudden absorption into blood sudden absorption you will write erratic absorption erratic means it will suddenly come into the blood would you like to give sublingual nicotine no person will say it is even better than smoking leave that cigarette bring sublingual it will produce intense pleasure no so we don't give nicotine orally and sublingually never it will become better than cigarette okay so we never give nicotine sublingually lozenges means you have seen strepsil strepsil which we keep in mouth and continuously slowly and slowly taste comes and right? that is now what is the side effect of nicotine nicotine it is contraindicated in heart disease patient like angina patient mi patient mi is myocardial infarction patient 
ओके माओकार्डियल इन्फॉक्शन पेशेंट ओके तो जेंजिस विल स्लोली एंड स्लोली रिलीज ओके सेकेंड ड्रग वे विल राइट फेरी very important drug for you very nicotine okay now very nicotine we will write is partial agonist at nicotinic receptor and for nicotinic receptor partial agonist at nicotinic receptor sir my question is if full agonist will produce this much effect what about partial agonist if full agonist will produce maximum effect can we say partial agonist will produce less effect can we say partial agonist will produce less pleasurable effect so can we give partial agonist also it will not produce pleasure it will not produce craving okay partial agonist at nicotinic receptor now which nicotinic receptor you will write one uh, specific type alpha 2 sorry alpha 2 alpha 4 beta 2 subtype you don't have to remember this part okay and some alpha 4 beta 2 subtype you don't have now what is the side effect of varinicline varinicline causes scissors and very nick clean causes suicides why it causes suicides because it causes depression in a depression patient remember suicidal tendencies occur it leads to depression depression leads to suicide okay and a depression leads to suicide third drug we will write is bupropion third drug is bupropion bupropion is an antidepressant bupropion is an antidepressant mechanism of action you'll write n d r i n d r i n d stand for nor epinephrine do d for dopamine reuptake inhibitor nor epinephrine dopamine reuptake inhibitor okay remember this dopamine specifically this dopamine it stimulates our reward centers okay it produces pleasure side effect again same we will write scissors again scissors same side effect scissors it also causes scissors okay okay now last point you will write in scissor patient give clonidine for smoking cessation okay in scissor patient give clonidine for smoking cessation okay done let's write certain non approved drugs not very important non approved drug for smoking cessation not very important for you okay non approved drug first you will write lobiline you'll write same like nicotine okay same like nicotine Nicotinamine, 
डोंट हैव टू रिमेंबर निकोटीन एंटागनिस्ट ओके थर्ड रिमोना बैंड यू विल राइट कैनाबिनोइड एंटागनिस्ट ओके विच रिसेप्टर यू विल राइट सीबी वन ब्लॉकर सीबी वन इज कैनाबिनोइड वन रिसेप्टर रिमेंबर वेन अ पर्सन टेक्स कैनाबिनोइड ओके जस्ट राइट द नेम नॉट ट्रिप्टली नथिंग यू हैव टू रिमेंबर अबाउट दैट नाउ रिमोना बैंड इज कैनाबिनोइड एंटागनिस सीबी वन इज कैनाबिनोइड वन रिसेप्टर रिमेंबर वेन अ पर्सन टेक्स कैनाबिनोइड लाइक भांग चरस गांजा एंड ऑल रिमेंबर इट वॉज अप्रूव एज एन एंटी स्मोकिंग ड्रग एंड Remona Bent was also approved as an anti-obesity drug because cannabinoid this stimulate appetite. You are blocking cannabinoid receptor; it will suppress appetite. So it was approved as an anti-smoking drug, and it was approved as an anti-obesity drug as well. Okay, anti-smoking drug. It was approved as an anti. obesity drug but this drug now has been banned this drug is given in your books that is why i am telling you again suicides same reason suicides okay no cannabinoid antagonist is not given as an antiemetic it is rather agonist which is given as an antiemetic okay shreya so it is not here so we'll discuss that later so these are the drugs now let's talk about the last drug then i will give you 2 minutes break the last alkaloid which we have to discuss is muscarin the last alkaloid we have to discuss is remember pan masala is muscarin okay muscarin okay now we will come to weeds about pritam what about weeds and ganja we will come to later on okay so it's a totally different okay last drug then i'll give you break so muscarin it is present in poisonous some poisonous mushrooms it is present in some poisonous mushroom okay yes it was given as an anti obesity now Let's make the last part that will finish our directly acting drug. Let's make a heading: mushroom poisoning. Let's make a heading: mushroom poisoning. Theory point of view, it's an important topic, but in entrance exams, this topic is not asked nowadays. But in your professional examination, this topic comes very commonly. now mushroom poisoning we will write there are three types of mushroom poisoning there are three types of mushroom poisoning we will write the first type you will write is the first type you will write is muscarine type it is also known as early type of mushroom poisoning why early type because the symptoms comes within some minutes very early the symptoms will come so muscarine type or early type second one after muscarine type or early type you will write second one is phalloidin type or late type and lastly you will write lastly you will write hallucinogenic type hallucinogenic type okay so write three type point muscarine type or early type phalloidin type or late type and lastly 
hallucinogenic type. These are the three types of mushroom poisoning. Okay. Let's see which species of mushroom most commonly cause. The most common species you will write here is inocybe. Inocybe species. Here you will write Amanita phalloides and Gallerina. Amanita phalloides and Gallerina. And lastly, hallucinogenic type Amanita muscaria. Amanita muscaria. Amanita muscaria. Okay. So don't confuse between muscaria and muscarine type. Okay. Let's see what happens. What is a toxin out here? What is a toxin out here? We will write the toxin which is present in this mushroom is muscarine. The toxin which is present in this mushroom is muscarine. And what is a clinical feature? What is a clinical feature? If you remember, muscarine was parasympathetic alkaloid. It's a parasympathetic drug. Okay. So this muscarine will increase parasympathetic activity. Cholinergic or parasympathetic activity. Can you tell me that mnemonic for that? Can you tell me the mnemonic? Can you tell me the symptoms? Dumbbells. Remember dumbbells? Treatment. Drug of choice is atropine. Drug of choice is atropine. Why? Because atropine is an anticholinergic drug. Atropine is an anticholinergic drug. I hope it's simple. Here you will write the toxin is amatoxin. Amatoxin. Here the toxin is amatoxin. Okay. And these amatoxin, they are hepatotoxic. They are hepatotoxic. This phalloidin type is the most dangerous mushroom poisoning. Okay. In liver, they decrease RNA synthesis. They decrease RNA synthesis. Treatment. Hepato. Protectives. Hepato. Protectives. So in the treatment of phalloidin type, which inhibit RNA synthesis, RNA synthesis, we give hepatoprotective agents. So these hepatoprotective agents, you will write two drugs you have to remember. One is thioctic acid. Second you will write is silibinin. They are antioxidant molecule. Okay. Hepatoprotectives. Okay. Hepatoprotectives. Okay. So hepatoprotectives are thioctic acid and silibinin. Lastly, lastly, we will come to Amanita muscaria. You'll write here the toxin is muskimol. Okay. Silocybin. 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 And they mainly produce psychosis. Or you will write hallucination. Okay. Psychosis, hallucination. You will write. You will write scissors. Okay. Treatment. No specific 
antidote. There is no specific antidote, so they produce psychosis, they produce scissors, okay, psychosis or hallucination. Treatment we will write no specific antidote. There is no specific antidote, okay. Uh, don't worry. Uh, now we will take a two minutes break uh, and we will uh, correct this problem of lagging. But you will write, but you will write, atropine is contraindicated. Here, atropine is contraindicated because atropine itself produces. psychosis atropine itself produces psychosis okay so i hope you have understood the mushroom poisoning okay so this is all about mushroom poisoning so make in a tabular form okay remember so uh, because atropine itself produces same symptoms Atropine itself produces same symptoms of psychosis, scissors, delirium, etc., which I will be telling you. Okay. Ramona band also produces Ramona band also produces anti-smoking effect and anti-obesity effect. Okay. Cannabinoid, they increase appetite. Ramona band is anti-cannabinoid. So it decreases appetite. Side effect is Cannabinoid, when you block cannabinoid receptor, person goes into depression and it leads to suicide. Okay. Because nicotine itself can cause heart disease. Nicotine can cause vasoconstriction, MI, etc. Most dangerous one is this phalloidin type. This is the most dangerous one. Phalloidin type is highly dangerous. Liver damage is happening. Okay. Liver damage is up. Yes, phalloidin type is the most dangerous one. Okay. Done. So we'll take two minutes break for Best drug for smoking cessation is nicotine. Nicotine is the most widely used drug for smoking cessation. Okay. So welcome back everyone. Metyl Tara, I'll explain you acetylcholine as a drug again. Just uh, wait for the class to get over. I'll explain you all your doubts. Okay. I'll come back all to your doubts. So let's talk about now indirectly acting drugs. Now, indirectly acting drugs, just indirectly acting drugs, they are known as anticholine esterase. They are known as anticholine esterase. So, indirectly acting drugs, they are known as anticholine esterase. Why they are known as anticholine esterase? Because these drugs, they increase endogenous level of acetylcholine. They increase the level of endogenous acetylcholine. And how? Because they inhibit pseudocholine esterase. More, and you will write acetylcholine esterase. So if somebody will ask you which enzyme is inhibited more with them, that is pseudocholine esterase. Okay. Which enzyme is inhibited more? You will write pseudocholine esterase. So can we say they will increase parasympathetic activity in the body? They will increase parasympathetic activity in the body. Okay. So now let's talk about what are the drugs we have among anticholine esterase. 
Now, anticholinesterase, these drugs are of two types. Anticholinesterase, these drugs are of two types. Okay. Either these drugs, we will write, are these drugs are either reversible inhibitor of cholinesterase enzyme. Okay. Or they are irreversible inhibitor. Either they inhibit this enzyme reversibly or irreversibly. Among reversible inhibitor, you will write two drugs. Okay. Among reversible inhibitor, you will write two drugs. One is carbamate. And second one drug, tacrine. The structure of tacrine is acridine. The structure of tacrine is acridine. Okay. Among irreversible inhibitor, we will write again carbamates and organophosphates. Organophosphate. For organophosphate, you we will use the term OP. Okay. We will use the term OP. Okay. So anticholinesterase are of two types: reversible inhibitor, reversible inhibitor, or irreversible inhibitor. Now let's see what is the difference between reversible and irreversible. But before going further, can you tell me which drug will be safer? in our patient to use if you want to use a drug in your patient which drug will be safer to use the drug which is safer yes some carbamates are reversible some carbamates are irreversible the drug which are safer to use in our patient are reversible inhibitor i'll tell you the reason why okay and these drugs are mainly used as a poisons these drugs are mainly used as a poisons to kill a person, to kill insects. Okay. Now let's talk about first, what is the difference between them? You will write that irreversible inhibitor, irreversible inhibitor means that these drugs, they form covalent bonds. They form covalent bonds. Second point to regain the activity. To regain the activity of enzyme. My question from you is can that same enzyme to which they have bound irreversibly that same enzyme now cannot function. To regain the activity, we require new synthesis of enzyme. We require new enzyme synthesis, which will take a lot of time. Okay, which will take a lot of time. Okay, so can we say that irreversible inhibitor, they will kill the enzyme? That is why irreversible inhibitor, they are also known as suicide inhibitor. They are known as suicide inhibitor. Why suicide inhibitor? Because the enzyme now is permanently dead. Okay. The enzyme now is permanently dead. To regain the activity we require now. You'll write that if reversible carbamate block or inhibit enzyme for very long duration. If reversible enzyme inhibitor, reversible inhibitor like carbamate inhibit an enzyme for very long duration, it mimics 
irreversible block it mimics like irreversible block because to regain the activity it will take lot of time this is known as pseudo irreversible this block is known as pseudo irreversible block so what do you mean by the word pseudo irreversible pseudo irreversible means falsely irreversible it means it is a reversible block but for very long duration but for very long duration okay but for very long duration now let's start let's start first with reversible inhibitor this one let's start first with reversible inhibitors first okay so let's start with reversible inhibitors to make a heading reversible anticholinesterases so let's start with and this is a very important part for you now reversible anticholinesterases they are of two types now this is a very important part for you okay reversible anticholinesterases they are of two type you will write either they are tertiary amine or they are quaternary amine either they are tertiary amine or they are quaternary amine now let's understand a part it's a very important part for you tertiary amine means that there is a nitrogen tertiary amine amine means that there is a nitrogen and this nitrogen is having three bonds i'm making an example for you that there is a nitrogen and this nitrogen is having three bonds do you agree with this part tertiary amine nitrogen with three bond what about quaternary amine there is a nitrogen quaternary means there are four bonds nitrogen with four bonds so can we say can we say that tertiary amines they are not having any charge or then quaternary amines they are polar polar means they are having charge on them now remember they are polar okay so if a molecule is a polar can we say it is hydrophilic or water soluble okay and these tertiary amines they are lipid soluble they are lipid soluble quaternary amine they are water soluble as simple as that they are water soluble very simple non polar now my question is we know that our cell membrane is made up of lipids phospholipid our cell membrane is made up of lipids and we know a lipid soluble drug can easily cross a lipid soluble membrane so tell me which drug will cross blood brain barrier which drugs can cross cornea which drugs can cross blood brain barrier which drugs can can cross cornea if they are given as a topical eye drops so can we say that they will cross they will not cross okay so my question is if you want to increase the level of acetylcholine in brain if you want to increase the level of acetylcholine in brain which i will tell you for alzheimer's disease you will use which drug you use tertiary amines because tertiary amines they are lipid soluble they can cross blood brain barrier they can cross blood brain barrier so let's talk about tertiary amines
so let's talk about tertiary means first let's write the drug name the first drug you will write is fesostigmine the first drug is fesostigmine okay first drug is fesostigmine fesostigmine is given as a topical eye drops to produce meiosis in glaucoma second fesostigmine is the drug of choice for atropa belladonna or in bracket you will write atropine poisoning it is the drug of choice for atropa belladonna poisoning okay now my question is does atropin crosses blood brain barrier remember that part of mushroom atropin was producing psychosis so i will tell you later on that atropin crosses blood brain barrier so you need to give an antidote that should also cross blood brain barrier okay second one you will write drugs for alzheimer's disease drugs for alzheimer's disease second one you will write is drugs for alzheimer's disease okay now what happens in alzheimer's disease first let's understand this part okay in alzheimer's disease there is neurodegeneration of cholinergic neurons okay in alzheimer's disease there is degeneration okay just a moment i'll just change the pen in alzheimer's disease okay in alzheimer's disease Uh, let me change then no problem and there is lagging we'll change it we'll change it okay okay now what happens so you will write drugs for alzheimer's disease okay so i'm changing my pen okay no problem now so uh the second type of tertiary amine we will write is these drugs are given for alzheimer's disease now what happens in alzheimer's disease that there is neurodegeneration of cholinergic neurons in our brain so why we give anticholinesterase because anticholinesterase the first drug we give for alzheimer's disease is centrally acting centrally acting anticholinesterase so the first drug which we give for alzheimer disease is centrally acting anticholinesterase because they will increase acetylcholine level in brain and increase in acetylcholine increases cognition and memory cognition and memory remember cognition and memory loss is known as dementia cognition and memory loss is known as dementia hence they are given because acetylcholine will increase cognition and memory increase in cognition and memory means you are treating dementia you are treating dementia so let's see what are the drugs the drug you will write is mnemonic t dagger you'll write four drugs t dagger okay 
the t word stand for tacrin t for tacrin second you will write donny pizzle galantamine these drugs are very important for you and lastly rivastigmine lastly rivastigmine okay rivastigmine to tacrin donepezil galantamine and rivastigmine now among them rivastigmine you will write that this first drug tacrin this first drug tacrin it was the shortest acting drug it was the shortest acting drug this tacrin was the shortest acting drug and it was hepatotoxic now remember a person who has a habit of forgetfulness or memory loss you will not give a shortest acting drug because a person will forget to take that drug because of this reason this tacrin has been banned and only these three drugs are used so this tacrin has been banned the only three drugs now which are approved are donepezil galantamine and rivastigmine okay now donepezil galantamine and rivastigmine okay now donepezil you will write it is the oral longest acting drug donepezil it it is the drug of choice it is the most effective drug for alzheimers it is the drug of choice and it is the most effective drug for alzheimers disease galantamine is a plant product Rivastigmine is available as a trans dermal patch. Rivastigmine is also available as a trans dermal patch. Okay. Now you will write if the symptoms are still not controlled. If the symptoms are still not controlled by these drugs donepezil like drug then we will write we use a drug mimantine we use a drug mimantine what is mimantine mimantine is an nmda blocker I will tell you about this NMDA blocker in CNS. NMDA is a receptor of glutamate. So it is a glutamate receptor blocker. It has been said that excess of glutamate causes nerve damage. Glutamate causes nerve damage. Okay. So if it is not controlled, we add a different class of drug. that is memantine okay so this is still about alzheimer disease we will discuss other drugs in cns central nervous system let's talk about now quaternary amines nmda is the name of a receptor full form you don't have to remember and okay n methyl d aspartate full form is not important quaternary amines so can you tell me quaternary amines can they cross blood brain barrier no they cannot cross first let's write the names of drugs nep we'll write the name of the drug nep first is neostigmine neostigmine mb nonium 
ओके सेंट्रली एक्टिंग मीन्स दे विल एक्ट इन ब्रेन ओके बेटा पाइरिडोस चिगमीन एंड एड्रोफोनियम एड्रोफोनियम इज ऑल्सो नोन एज इट इट इज ऑल्सो नोन विद अ वर्ड टेंसीलॉन एड्रोफोनियम इज ऑल्सो नोन एज टेंसीलॉन ओके रिमेंबर दिस पार्ट You should not get confused between pyridostigmine and physostigmine. Physostigmine was tertiary amine. Pyridostigmine is a quaternary amine. Okay. Now we will write. Hydrophonium is most water soluble, and it is the shortest acting. Hydrophonium is the shortest acting drug, very commonly asked. Pyridostigmine is the longest acting drug. Pyridostigmine is the longest acting drug. Neostigmine. Neostigmine is the most commonly used drug. Most commonly used drug is neostigmine. and you will write neostigmine has so neostigmine is the most commonly used drug and we will write that neostigmine additionally can directly stimulate nm receptor Neostigmine can, apart from increasing acetylcholine level, neostigmine can also directly stimulate the receptor. Okay, so it is both directly acting as well as indirectly acting drug is neostigmine. Okay, so let's see what are the uses of these drugs. Very important. What are the uses of these drugs? so first use we will write okay first use they are the drug of choice for reversal of reversal of skeletal muscle relaxant to reverse the effect of skeletal muscle relaxant we give this drug now if you remember skeletal muscle relaxant like if you remember curare like drug curare like drug these skeletal muscle relaxant they block which receptor nm so curare like drugs they block nm receptor If you will increase the level of acetylcholine, acetylcholine will win the competition with curare, and acetylcholine, when increased by neostigmine, will overcome the blockage of NM receptor. Okay, so where curare are given? Curare are given. These curare are given in. They are given during surgery. During surgery, we give skeletal muscle relaxant so that a person should not move during surgery. So these curare they are given during surgery. So this neostigmine we will write. They are given for post-operative muscle paralysis to overcome post-operative muscle paralysis. We give. drug of choice is neostigmine drug of choice is neostigmine to overcome the effect of curare any other drug you can give yes you can give hydrophonia you can also give hydrophonia but the drug of choice is curare now second this neostigmine is also given or the drug of choice for 
cobra bite poisoning cobra bite poisoning so this neostigmine is also given for cobra bite poisoning okay why because this venom of cobra blocks just like curare it also blocks nm receptor and the person dies because of skeletal muscle paralysis or respiratory paralysis okay so the venom of cobra blocks nm receptor nm receptors are present on muscles the person dies because of skeletal muscle paralysis so for the treatment of cobra bite poisoning first we give anti venom which is considered as a drug of choice for any sick poisoning so the first drug you give is anti venom okay so for cobra bite poisoning the first drug we give is anti venom and the second point we will write if the person has respiratory paralysis we add neostigmine we add neostigmine because neostigmine will increase acetylcholine level which will overcome the effect now my question is in the first case we have discussed one drug that drug is curare in the second case we have discussed one poison which is blocking nm receptor third use one autoimmune disease in which antibody blocks nm receptor can you tell me that disease in which antibodies block nm receptor that autoimmune disease is myasthenia gravis myasthenia gravis myos means muscle asthenia means weakness here antibody they block nm receptor so first case was a drug curare second case was a poison cobra bite third case is an autoimmune disease in which antibody they all block nm receptor okay nm receptor now because of this reason the person has weakness and person dies because of respiratory paralysis now my question is before coming to the treatment of myasthenia gravis first i want to tell you the side effect of neostigmine like drug then i will tell you the treatment of myasthenia gravis okay so side effect when you give neostigmine like drug when you give neostigmine like drug can we say that neostigmine increases acetylcholine level and this acetylcholine will act on both receptor nicotinic and muscarinic this acetylcholine will act on both nicotinic and muscarinic effect okay now my question is in all above disease like cobra bite myasthenia gravis or curare we want this action we want the action on nicotinic receptor so in all above disease we want the action of neostigmine on which receptor nicotinic receptor but because of this muscarinic neostigmine will produce, produce its side effect okay so we want action on nicotinic we don't want action on muscarinic so can we say because of muscarinic it will lead to salivation sweating okay so just write the word dumbbells and bradycardia and bradycardia don't you think because of bradycardia person may die suddenly hence 
with nicotine neosigmine we always give one drug that is atropine because atropine is an anti muscarinic drug atropine is an anti muscarinic drug okay so why we give atropine always along with neosigmine why we give atropine along with neosigmine always because atropine is an anti muscarinic drug it will block this symptom of it will block this symptom of neosigmine the side effect of neosigmine are blocked by atropine so atropine will block this effect okay so remember so let's talk about the last topic of the day myasthenia gravis myasthenia gravis a very important topic for you let's talk about myasthenia gravis we prefer to give atropine okay glycopyrrolate can also be given okay other anti muscarinic drugs can also be given most commonly used is atropine okay now myasthenia gravis so this is the last topic of our day let's talk about what do you mean by the word myasthenia gravis you'll write myasthenia gravis is an autoimmune disease in which antibodies are produced and these antibodies they block nm receptor on muscles they block nm receptors on muscles and this nm receptors will decrease in quantity their number will decrease and they will also decrease in quality quality means their responsiveness is also reduced okay now for the treatment now what are the clinical features because of this reason the person has symptoms of weakness and fatigue the person has symptoms of weakness and fatigue because of muscle paralysis can you tell me the most common muscle which is involved the most common muscles is the most commonly used muscle that is ocular ocular myasthenia gravis and the last muscle or the most resistant muscle is diaphragm the most last muscle is diaphragm and now can you tell me the cause of death in the patient the cause of death in the patient is you know is respiratory paralysis the cause of death is respiratory paralysis now let's talk about what is the treatment what is the treatment now for myasthenia gravis we have two types of drug the first drug is you overcome this block to overcome this block of nm receptor we give symptomatic treatment we give symptomatic treatment means to overcome the weakness and fatigue we give symptomatic treatment we give anticholine esterase anticholine esterase anticholine esterase what they will do they will increase acetylcholine level which will overcome nm block which will overcome nm block okay so what is the drug of choice among anticholine esterase the drug of choice among anticholine esterase is pyridoxine better than neosigmine So, what is the drug of choice for myasthenia gravis? Pyridoxine or neosigmine. But the better drug is pyridoxine. And can you tell me which other drug you will add? Which other drug would you like to add to them? Which other drug would you like to add? Atropine. 
you know why ectropin is added now the reason why pyridostigmine is given because pyridostigmine is the longest acting oral drug that is why pyridostigmine is more preferred okay but there is one advantage of neostigmine neostigmine can be given by injections also neostigmine can be given by injections also if a person cannot take a drug orally then you can give neostigmine to your patient okay now keeping this thing in mind let's talk about the treatment of myasthenia gravis okay before that before that second thing what you have to do is you have overcome the block of nm receptor by anticholinesterase second thing you have to remove these antibodies so second thing you have to do is removal of these antibodies so removal of these antibodies is done by giving a drug known as immunosuppressors okay so removal of antibodies is by immunosuppressive drugs okay second thing we will do is remove these antibody so second thing we will write is remove antibodies and this is known as definitive treatment this is known as definitive treatment okay definitive treatment so let's see what are the drugs the drug of choice is prednisone now prednisone you know is a corticosteroid the dose you have to remember of prednisone 30 to 60 mg per day okay 30 to 60 mg per day we start prednisone in a dose of 30 to 60 mg per day and after 1 to 3 months we gradually taper we gradually taper and we taper to 10 mg per day or alternative day 10 mg per day and alternative day but there is a problem with prednisone the problem with prednisone is if you will give prednisone for very long duration of time it will lead to a syndrome known as cushing syndrome cushing syndrome is because of corticosteroid prednisone is a corticosteroid hence for maintenance we give steroid sparing agent so for maintenance for long term maintenance we give steroid sparing agent why because they do not cause cushing syndrome there is no cushing syndrome with steroid sparing agent so let's write the names of steroid sparing agent the first one you will write is azathioprine it is the most commonly used drug for myasthenia gravis okay which is sometimes known as drug of choice cyclosporin these drugs right now you will not know what are these drugs but we will discuss them later on cyclosporin and tacrolimus they are also immunosuppressive drug okay prednisone okay you will write they are faster mycophenolate mofetil you will write safest rituximab okay mycophenolate mofetil safest then rituximab and lastly you will write cyclophosphamide cyclophosphamide okay 
Now, rituximab, MAP world is coming. MAP means monoclonal antibody. It block CD20. CD20 is a receptor on B lymphocyte. B lymphocyte will get killed. Cyclophosphamide is given for resistant cases. Cyclophosphamide is given for resistant cases. Cyclophosphamide is given for resistant cases. Okay. Now, keeping this thing in mind, I will make you a diagram, a flow chart, how to treat, how to treat my senior gravis. So let's make a flow chart, how to treat my senior gravis. Treatment of my senior gravis. See which muscles are involved. Ocular myasthenia gravis and generalized myasthenia gravis ocular and generalized ocular means only eye muscles are involved the most commonly muscles involved in are just give me five minutes let me finish myasthenia gravis okay in us we will give here anticholine esterase In resistant cases, we give immunosuppressive immunosuppressive drugs. We know immunosuppressive drugs, okay? Like prednisone, azathioprine, okay? Anticholine. Generalized myasthenia gravis. Again, we will write anticholine esterase. Anticholine esterase like pyridoxygmine. In resistant cases, we do thymectomy. In resistant cases, we give thymectomy. So, do we remove thymus in ocular myasthenia gravis? No. We give we do thymectomy generalized when all the muscles of the bodies are involved. So thymectomy is given, is done in generalized myasthenia gravis. And the second use of thymectomy when there is associated thymoma. When there is associated thymoma, a tumor of thymus, we do thymectomy. And in still resistant cases, We give immunosuppressive drugs. In still resistant cases, we give immunosuppressive drugs. Okay. Immunosuppressive drug. Now the last point of the day, just give me three minutes more. Diagnosis of myasthenia gravis. So you will write first point. What is the role of Idrophonium or tensilon in myasthenia gravis. What is the role of idrophonium or tensilon in myasthenia gravis? There are two roles of idrophonium in myasthenia gravis. First, Diagnosis of myasthenia gravis. This test is known as Tensilon test. Okay. First use of hydrophonium is diagnosis of myasthenia gravis. This test is known as Tensilon test. What is that? I'll tell you. Second, to differentiate between myasthenic crisis versus cholinergic crisis. Second, to differentiate between myasthenic crisis versus cholinergic crisis, 
Now, what do you mean by this word myasthenic crisis and cholinergic crisis? I'll tell you. So just give me one or two minutes, last one or two minutes. First is tensilon test. Okay. First is tensilon test. Okay. Let's talk about first what is tensilon test. In tensilon test, we will write that we give 2 milligram IV hydrophonium. 2 milligram IV hydrophonium and this hydrophonium increases acetylcholine level and this acetylcholine produces improvement in symptoms. of myasthenia gravis it leads to improvement in symptoms of myasthenia gravis do you agree with this part and acetylcholine will overcome the blockage of antibodies so it will lead to improvement in symptoms of myasthenia gravis so can we say symptoms will improve so this is an ameliorative test for myasthenia gravis ameliorative test for myasthenia gravis now what do you mean by ameliorative test when there is improvement in symptoms it is known as ameliorative test can you tell me when there is worsening of symptom it is known as remember that methacholine methacholine was causing bronchoconstriction if the symptoms worsen that test is known as provocative test that test is known as provocative test okay so is there any provocative test for myasthenia yes we can give d tubo curare d tubo curare block nm like antibody it blocks nm receptor like antibody so it will lead to worsening of symptoms it leads to worsening of symptoms okay my question is which test would you like to do in your patient ameliorative test or provocative test which will be safer remember we do ameliorative test we don't do provocative test because provocative tests might be dangerous person can go into paralysis so which test we do in our patient we do tensilon test we don't do provocative test okay we don't do provocative test we do ameliorative test in myasthenia gravis and you will write that Tensilon test is also positive in Lambert Eaton syndrome. It is also positive in Lambert Eaton syndrome. So there is improvement in Lambert Eaton syndrome. Okay. Lambert Eaton syndrome. Last point is, last point, what is myasthenic crisis? What is cholinergic crisis? Okay. No, no, just class is not till four. Class is just two, three minutes more. Okay. 215. Okay. Now, last point is, what do you mean by the word myasthenic crisis? I'll give you one question. This question has been asked. Just see that clinical scenario. Just have this clinical scenario. There is a patient of myasthenia gravis comes to emergency with respiratory paralysis. There is a patient of myasthenia gravis comes to an emergency with respiratory paralysis. So can we say it's an emergency? Emergency is known as crisis. Okay. 
This emergency is known as crisis. Now, this crisis or respiratory paralysis could be because of two reasons. Okay, suppose a patient of myasthenia comes. This crisis could be because of two reasons. Okay, this crisis could be because of two reasons. Just a moment. So, you know that, remember your physiology knowledge. Remember from your physiology that there are two types of muscle paralysis. There are two types of muscle paralysis. One is spastic paralysis. One is flaccid paralysis. Okay. One is spastic paralysis and one is flaccid paralysis. Just a moment. There is some problem. Just a moment. Okay, what we can do, we can continue this part tomorrow. Okay, so just go back and read. I will tell you about this myasthenic crisis and cholinergic crisis tomorrow. So we'll end our lecture here. So tomorrow, so okay, so we are ending our class out here only. So we will discuss this point tomorrow. Okay because there is a schedule of next class. So we will come with this problem tomorrow. Okay. Okay. I know you are very hungry. I hope you have understood a lot. The concepts part. Okay. So we'll continue tomorrow. No worry. No worry. Some students are feeling hungry also. So food is always the first love we discussed yesterday. Food is always the first love. Study is the second love. So complete. Just be honest with your first love. Tomorrow we will come to our second love. Okay. So we will discuss this part tomorrow. So till then. Now, if you have any doubt, if you have any doubt, I have posted on Dams Exclusive Club. You can post your queries out there on Dams Exclusive Club. I have made a post regarding a query and you can tag me. Okay. So if anything in the lecture you haven't understood, you need to re re refresh or brush up again. You can ask me. Okay. Yeah. Cobra bite. You're asking me Cobra venom is a neurotoxic venom. It blocks nicotinic receptor on muscles which leads to muscle paralysis. So we will increase the level of acetylcholine. Acetylcholine will compete with poison. If the level of acetylcholine is very high, acetylcholine will win the competition and it will lead to muscle contraction, which will overcome the effect of poison. Steroid sparing agent means that these drugs will reduce the dependence on steroid. If a person will take steroid for long term, it will lead to Cushing syndrome, which is a very bad thing. Steroid sparing agent means that they will not cause Cushing syndrome and they will reduce the dependence of the patient on steroid. So person will now not have to take steroids. So it's a separate topic. Steroid sparing agent we will discuss later on when we will discuss immunity. Okay. Nicotinic action of neostigmine. Yes, nico, uh, nic, uh, neostigmine increases the level of acetylcholine. Neostigmine can also directly stimulate nicotinic receptors. Okay. Yeah, I will be coming to plasma pheresis in this part only. In myasthenic crisis, we do plasma pheresis and IVIG, which I will be telling you tomorrow. Okay. Which I will be telling you tomorrow. Plasma pheresis and all. What is plasma pheresis, plasma exchange, intravenous immunoglobulin? Yes, Nenad Mehta. What is plasma pheresis? I was just about to tell you now. Okay, in this example, I was telling you in this crisis, we generally do plasma pheresis. We will discuss that tomorrow. Plasma pheresis. So we do plasma pheresis in this condition. Okay, so we will discuss that tomorrow.
you want to see the slide of steroid sparing agent? Yeah, you can have this slide. This is the slide of steroid sparing agent. 